In the Persona series, a persona is the manifestation of a person's personality, a mask used to face hardship. Whether it is coming to terms with the truths about you that you would wish to ignore, or taking a stand against the oppression you have been forced to endure, obtaining a persona is the start of the journey, but most certainly not the end. The persona characters have a final or ultimate persona, the most powerful form of their persona. This is often achieved by completing difficult goals or obtaining personal milestones. In Persona 5, the cast achieve their final persona by maxing out their confidant stat, which are little side stories unique to each character. Think of it as a personal hero's journey for each of the party members. Obtaining their persona might be their call to adventure, but the confidant paths is their personal road of trials. Upon finishing their confidant paths, the characters have come to a new insight about them and steal their resolve for the trials to come, their apotheosis. In Persona 5, apotheosis is shown as the character achieving the ultimate form of their persona. Just as the initial persona of the Persona 5 cast had the theme of trickster, their final personas have the theme of descending into the underworld or falling from grace. Given the game's themes of rehabilitation and reputation, this seems appropriate. Needless to say, this video contains spoiler for the story of Persona 5. Morgana's ultimate persona is Mercurius, aka Mercury, aka Hermes of Greco-Roman mythology. He is the god of commerce, eloquence, trickery, thieves, and travelers. Given Morgana's personality, love of treasure, and ability to turn into a bus, this seems appropriate. Mercurius is also the guide of souls to the underworld. He would take them as far as Charon who would ferry them the rest of the way. Mercurius is also known as the messenger of the gods. All of this ties into Morgana, specifically when he realizes what his true purpose is. At the end of the game, the players realize that Morgana was created by Igor to bring the trickster to the depths of Mementos and free Igor. He isn't meant to become human, he is a guide for the Phantom Thieves. Whereas Morgana initially saw the Phantom Thieves as pawns, he realizes that his place is with them. As you can tell from the design, Ryuji's final persona, Satan Taisei, is Sun Wukong, the Monkey King from the Chinese novel Journey to the West. Satan Taisei is actually a title that Sun Wukong gave himself, meaning the equaling Heaven Great Sage, to win the respect of the heavens by force. Later on though, he is recognized by the Jade Emperor and given responsibility. This connects with Ryuji with how much pride he takes in being a phantom thief. He has so much pride that he sometimes can't shut up about it. But Ryuji has no idea what gravity his actions carry. He is too caught up in the fame. But over time, Ryuji understands what responsibility his title carries on how people look up to the phantom thieves and he learns to take his role seriously. Sun Wukong is pulled into the underworld when he returns home to sleep because the ledgers of life and death state that it is his time to die. This enrages him because he has already achieved immortality, meaning he was no longer subject to the laws of heaven. So he rages in the underworld until the ruler of the underworld allows him to cross out his name from the ledger. He also crosses out the names of all the monkeys and made them immortal too. He then returns to his mortal body and wakes up. This could be a reference to how the Phantom Thieves escape Shido's ship. Ryuji going all out to get the lifeboat to help his comrades escape could be the same as crossing out the names of all the monkeys from the ledgers. When we think Ryuji has made the ultimate sacrifice, he wakes up in a bit to join his teammates. Anne's final persona, Hecate, is the Greek goddess of crossroads, magic, witchcraft, and necromancy. Hecate helped Demeter find her daughter Persephone when she was taken to the underworld. When Persephone has to go back to the underworld to be with her husband, Hecate follows Persephone as her minister and companion in the underworld. These ties in with Anne's friendship with Shiho. The two remain friends even through Kamoshida's abuses, and even when Shiho has to transfer to another school. Since Shiho's reputation is tarnished with her suicide attempt, she has little choice but to leave her school and her friends, though the two do vow to stay in touch. Hecate's in-game description specifically mentions her appearance in Shakespeare's Macbeth. This could be tied in with Anne's relationship to Kamoshida. 
Hecate's prophecy to Macbeth is what leads him to believe that he is invincible. A loophole in the prophecy becomes his undoing. Kamoshida felt untouchable in his palace and did not expect Ann to be part of the people plotting against him. Susanoo, Yusuke's final persona, is one of the three children created by Izanagi when he washed his face clean of the pollutants of Yomi, or the underworld. The children were created when Izanagi washed his right eye, left eye, and nose. These ties into Madarame's boss fight since his right eye, left eye, and nose are parts to be targeted. Susana O was banished to the underworld when he destroyed his sister Amaterasu's rice fields, among other things. Once again, this connects to Madarame as Yusuke brought about a lot of trouble for his adopted father. He no longer lives in his adopted father's house, but stays in the school's dorm. Just as Susana O needed to learn to control his anger, Yusuke struggles with his pursuit of art. He wants his art to be pure, but struggles with his desire to be acknowledged by others. Susana O eventually learns to come to terms with both of his aspects. His cunning and his strength is what allow him to slay the Yamatano Orochi. Similarly, Yusuke learns that the human heart has both desire and hope, which is what allows him to get out of his artist block. Anat, the Semitic Egyptian goddess of fertility and war, reflects Makoto's own paradoxical nature. Makoto is both nurturing and violent. Anat is often mentioned with her brother, Baal, whom she is loyal to. When Mot kills Baal and sends him to the land of the dead, Anat confronts Mot and demands he release her brother. When Mot refuses, she cuts him with a sword, splits him with a pitchfork, burns him with fire, grinds him with a millstone, and plants him in the fields. Apparently, overkill doesn't exist in Semitic mythology. Maybe that's why we only see Mot as a coffin. With the help of Shafash, goddess of the underworld, Anat brings her brother back to life. This could reflect Makoto's own relationship with her sister, Sae. Makoto wants to save her sister from her obsession with her career and actually thought at one point to suggest her name to the Phantom Thieves. Just as Anat got her revenge on Mot and brought her brother back from the dead, so too did Makoto save her sister from her own twisted desires. Anat does not share Johanna's motorcycle form. Recall that Makoto was stuck living up to the expectations of others and it was only thanks to the Phantom Thieves that she gained the courage to break out of that role. A not losing the motorcycle form could symbolize how Makoto does not need anyone to propel her forward anymore. She will do it on her own. Futaba's final persona is Prometheus, the Greek titan who stole fire and the skill of metalwork from Mount Olympus and gave it to mankind. In the War of the Olympians and Titans, Prometheus switched sides when the Titans refused to use trickery in war. However, Zeus was enraged with his theft and as punishment, tied Prometheus to a rock where an eagle eats his liver every day. While Prometheus doesn't descend into the underworld, he is in a way banished from heaven. This connects to Futaba in that she keeps herself prisoner in her own room and the guilt of her mother's death constantly weighing down on her. And it is not just her own guilt that weighs her down, her relatives occasionally harass Sojiro for money. However, because Prometheus gave fire and metalworks to mankind, they have used these gifts to create wonders. Similarly, Futaba's hacking has been a great asset for the Phantom Thieves. They had enemies who had great influence and power, and the Phantom Thieves would have been powerless against them without Futaba. I think her greatest fire was planting the bug on Nakechi's phone. Because of this, the Phantom Thieves were able to strike back at the enemies who were manipulating them. Prometheus would eventually be freed by Hercules in the same way Futaba is freed by the protagonist. Interesting to note, Hercules has 12 labors he had to do to be forgiven from his crime. There are 10 major bosses in the game. Add in the optional bosses of Caroline and Justine and the Reaper and you have 12 bosses. Probably just a coincidence, but there is the interesting parallel of Hercules performing these labors for forgiveness and Joker overcoming these trials to complete his rehabilitation. As Starty, Haru's final persona is the trickiest one because she goes by multiple names. She is Isis, she is Ishtar, she is Aphrodite. Some even say that Astarte and Anat are the same deity, so there is a lot to draw from. But the clue is in her persona's description 
which describe her as being called the Queen of Heaven in the Bible. This is interesting because in some versions of the Bible, her name is sometimes written as Ashtoreth, which combines her name and the Hebrew word Boshet, which means shame. Hebrew scholars believe that this was done to show contempt for her followers who were associated with paganism. In addition, there is the actual name of the persona, Astarte, which Hebrew scholars would repurpose and turn into Astaroth, the name of the great duke of hell. Oddly enough, this can connect with Haru. If Haru tried to get control of her father's company, the workers would eat her alive. Not only does she know nothing about business, but her father filled his company with unsavory types. Many of the workers are already spreading rumors about Haru to damage her reputation. So there are already massive power plays even when she herself is doing nothing. Astarte is a goddess of fertility, and this does connect with Haru and her passion for gardening. Haru initially doesn't think much of her ability to grow produce, but she then sees it as a passion she can pursue in the future as she opens up her own coffee shop. It is also the way that she handles her father's company. By taking a stand against serving substandard products to their customers, Haru is able to find allies in the company and steer it away from her father's ambitions. Akechi's final persona, or rather his first persona, is Loki, the trickster god of Norse mythology. Loki is known to help both sides of the conflict, the Aesir of the Asgard and the Giants of Jotunheim. This connects with Akechi as he pretends to help both the Phantom Thieves and Shido, when he is really just using both of them to achieve his own ends. Loki is the father of Hel, the goddess of the underworld, Jormungand, the world serpent, and Fenrir, the great wolf, all of which bring calamity to the Aesir, much like how Akechi is the source of the mental shutdown cases by using his unique ability, Call of Chaos. Some people were wondering about his true costume. His true costume has a recurring pattern of two colors, showing his contradicting desires of helping Shido and becoming the source of his downfall. His name of Akechi could be a reference to Mitsuhide Akechi, a general of the daimyo Oda Nobunaga, whose betrayal of his lord would lead to the death of the daimyo. While all of the personas have descended to hell or have been banished from heaven, they still maintain the divine order. Loki is the only one who seeks to destroy the divine order as he would join the giants during Ragnarok, the great battle that will happen during the end of times. This links to Goro in that he is the only one of the metaverse players who is not working towards a goal. He is not trying to consolidate power or reform society. Finally, we have Joker's persona, which is the devil himself, Satanael. In Christian mythology, Satan rebelled against God and was banished from heaven. But in doing this, Satan allowed humanity to have freedom and chaos. Satanael would forever be branded as a traitor and a villain. We can see the connections to Joker, who acted against Cheeto, who was already a man of influence. Thanks to his actions, Joker is forced to live with the brand of a criminal. A recurring theme in the Shin Megami Tensei franchise is the conflict between law and chaos, which is not necessarily a fight between good and evil. Chaos is pure freedom, removing all restrictions and allowing humanity to grow and develop. However, such a freedom would often yield the oppression of the weak by the strong. Law would promote a peaceful utopia where all forms of suffering are eliminated, but this does not leave room for individuality and free will. Such a system would lead to stagnation. The Holy Grail, or Yaldaboath, is the purest form of law. It is filled with the wishes of humans who desire to be enslaved to order and authority. With Akechi creating public unrest due to the mental shutdown cases, the public was seeking safety through order. They believed that this would come with Shido, who promises to bring order. The masses, desperate for stability, throws in their support for Shido, regardless of his blatantly shady dealings. This turns out to be a conspiracy of Yaldaboa to control the populace. So it makes sense that Joker, the legendary trickster, has Satanael as his final persona. Satanael is the purest form of chaos. From the beginning, Arsene has been encouraging Joker to run wild with his power. Joker leads the Phantom Thieves to disrupt society by exposing the corruption that exists within supposed paragons. The palace owners, who people admire greatly, 
turning out to be horrible people is a shock to the populace who could not conceive that such admirable people were capable of such corruption. Having these truths exposed disrupts the peace that Yaldabaoth is trying to achieve. Finally, there is Satanael's weapon, Sinful Shell, a bullet made up of the seven deadly sins that can pierce a god. Each of the palaces represents one of the seven deadly sins, with mementos representing sloth and Madarami's museum representing vanity, which is one of the deadly sins before it was replaced with envy. Some people have pointed out that the Phantom Thieves themselves represent the seven deadly sins. Ryuji is pride, An is gluttony, Morgana is envy, Yusuke is greed, Makoto is wrath, Futaba is sloth, and Haru is lust. That makes Joker vanity, but it still kinda makes sense. This implies that the seven deadly sins have power, but it is a power that allies itself with no one, law or chaos. Just as Yaldaboath can use it, so can Satanael. Throughout the game, the palace owners revel in their arrogance. They hold themselves as above everyone, seeing everyone around them as something less than human, and think themselves as untouchable. Satanael's move is a reminder that even the greatest of tyrants is one bullet away from oblivion. Thanks for watching. I'm sure I'm just scratching the surface here. These figures are dense with mythology and history, so feel free to share your insights and interpretation in the comments below. I've added some links in case you would like to read up on these figures yourself. Until our paths cross again, see you wildcard.